OpenAI has officially completed its for-profit conversion, and here's everything you need to know. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Yesterday, OpenAI announced the official completion of its for-profit conversion. This has been one of the huge overhangs for this company this year, and we're going to break down why it's important, what the implications are, and how different groups of people are reacting. Now, this has been a long time coming. All the way back in December of last year, the company announced their intention to move towards a for-profit structure away from their nonprofit structure. The argument that they made was that while their mission had always been to build AI that could benefit humanity, as they put it, eventually it became clear that the most advanced AI would continuously use more and more compute, and that they would need far more compute and therefore far more capital than they could obtain with donations. That led first to the 2019 decision to create a weird type of for-profit that was controlled entirely by the nonprofit that had a capped profit share. It was those moves that allowed them to do their first deals with Microsoft. Yet heading into 2025, the company's argument was that the structure was too off-kilter and out of sync with the world to do what they needed to do to build AI to benefit all humanity. Their stated goal was to transform their existing for-profit into a public benefit corporation, which is an increasingly common structure that adds considerations outside of profit to the mandate of a company, while also maintaining a nonprofit that owned a big chunk of that PBC. Already at that point, there was a lot of scuttlebutt and debate around this idea of a for-profit conversion, but the stakes got even higher in the spring when a big chunk of OpenAI's funding from SoftBank was contingent upon that for-profit conversion. Not only that, they had to do it by the end of this year. Almost immediately, there was a backlash, in April, a group of nonprofits came together to ask the California Attorney General to stop the motion, said coalition member Fred Blackwell, who is the CEO of the San Francisco Foundation. Operating as a nonprofit may no longer suit OpenAI, but that does not mean it can walk away from its obligation to serve the public good. It's up to Attorney General Rob Bonta to use his authority to prevent OpenAI from enriching shareholders and investors with over $300 billion in nonprofit assets intended for charitable purposes. Another group wrote open letters to the attorney generals of both California and Delaware in April and then an update in May, again insisting that OpenAI not be allowed to proceed. The signatories included a bunch of law professors, as well, of course, as Jeffrey Hinton. As a total aside, if there were a Mount Rushmore for ineffective political strategies, the Washington of that monument would be open letters. I am telling you, the royal you, the everyone you, if you are considering an open letter, do not do it. It is not effective. In fact, it has the exact opposite effect that you think it will. But of course, advocacy strategy is not the subject of this podcast. And the point is that there was a lot of consternation right away. Now, the other group that had a big stake in this and was going to need some work to get on board was, of course, Microsoft. Heading into the restructure, Microsoft had a 20% top line revenue share and a 49% profit share if OpenAI hit profitability. There was the weird AGI clause, where if OpenAI's board declared that they had reached AGI, Microsoft would lose access to the models, and in any case, they were losing access in 2030, so they had a bunch of different pieces of negotiation. They wanted a fair outcome when it came to their ownership stake in the new entity, and presumably they wanted to renegotiate to not be constantly looking over the shoulder for weird declarations of AGI. At various points this year, those tensions looked like they were reaching a fever pitch, and Microsoft let it be known in the press that they were not the ones who needed to make a deal by the end of the year. And that brings us to yesterday. OpenAI board chair Brett Taylor published a blog post called Built to Benefit Everyone. In it, he writes, OpenAI has completed its recapitalization, simplifying its corporate structure. The nonprofit remains in control of the for-profit and now has a direct path to major resources before AGI arrives. A lot of this blog post emphasized the idea that the nonprofit, which was now called the OpenAI Foundation, was now, in their words, one of the best resource philanthropic organizations ever, holding equity worth approximately $130 billion. They also talked about two initial focus areas for the foundation, including health and curing diseases and technical solutions to AI resilience. Around the announcement, Altman also specifically spoke to the discussions with the attorneys general. He wrote, California is my home and I love it here, and when I talked to Attorney General Bonta two weeks ago, I made it clear that we were not going to do what those other companies do and threaten to leave if sued. We really wanted to figure this out and are really happy about where it all landed, and very much appreciate the work of the Attorney General. Now, there are actually a bunch of different parts of their agreement. One was a commitment not to move out of California. Another was a commitment to make technical changes to OpenAI products to protect kids. OpenAI's head of global affairs, Chris Lehane, said, You end up with the nonprofit remaining in control. You end up with California being home to one of and potentially the largest nonprofit in history. You have real progress being made on kids' safety, and then you have the California piece of this. Attorney General Bonta, in a press conference, called the deals in the Memorandum of Understanding major concessions. 
He said that the MOU will help them adhere to their mission going forward, ensuring safety, including the safety of children. Delaware Attorney General Kathy Jennings also announced that her office had completed a review of the recapitalization and issued a statement of no objection. If you want to read the Memorandum of Understanding, the full document is available online. But what about the Microsoft piece of this? In most people's perception, Microsoft did well in this negotiation. Their stake in the company went from 32.5% down to 27%, which is worth approximately $135 billion at current valuations. In another huge shift, and one that Microsoft investors will be very happy about, AGI will no longer be determined by OpenAI's board, but by an independent expert panel. Additionally, IP rights were extended through 2032 and will now include post-AGI models with appropriate safety guardrails. Although exactly what that means, obviously we don't know yet. Basically, Microsoft bought themselves another two years extra time to piggyback off of OpenAI's models. The revenue share remains in place, which is also a big deal, to the extent that Microsoft's equity gets diluted by big deals like the NVIDIA $100 billion investment. OpenAI contracted to purchase an additional $250 billion worth of Azure cloud services. But in so doing, OpenAI got out of their exclusivity, with Microsoft no longer having a right of first refusal to be OpenAI's compute provider. One interesting one if you're tracking what's happening with iPhone designer Johnny Ive, Microsoft IP rights now exclude OpenAI's consumer hardware. In other words, whatever OpenAI is working on around hardware is valuable enough to them that they were willing to make other concessions in order to exclude Microsoft from having access to it a priori. All in all, investors loved the deal. Microsoft's stock was up, pushing its market cap above $4 trillion for the first time ever. In the wake of the deal, lots of folks were reflecting on just how good a deal Microsoft's initial investment in OpenAI had become. Nick Schrock writes, is Microsoft parlaying 10 to 30 billion of mostly cloud credits, not cash, into a 27% stake in OpenAI? Might be the most successful strategic investment of all time? CEO Satya Nadella joined media's upstart TBPN for an exclusive to talk about the deal. And he actually joked that back in 2019, Bill Gates told Nadella that the $1 billion investment in OpenAI was the equivalent of lighting the money on fire. Nadella underplayed his long-term sense of the financial opportunity, saying, I didn't put in that billion dollars saying, oh yeah, this is going to be a hundred bagger. That's not what was going through our heads. We had a high risk tolerance, and we said we want to go and give this a shot. One more aside for media people out there, now that I've castigated open letters, you'll notice that Satya Nadella did not do a media tour yesterday. Instead, he gave the exclusive to this new hot in-demand outlet in TBPN and got a ton of earned media because that. If TBPN had been one of a dozen outlets alongside CNN and Bloomberg, all of that earned media would have gone away. But what about takes outside the core entities involved? For one group, this is, as V. Meshowitz puts it, the greatest theft in human history. Outside of philosophical concerns, some folks tried to crystallize why they thought it was a problem. Met Council CEO David Greenfield writes, OpenAI was founded as a nonprofit to benefit humanity. Today, it officially became a for-profit juggernaut. Why does that matter? Because when profit drives AI, there are zero safeguards. Jobs, safety, truth, all at risk. And yet when people dug a little bit deeper, even some of the This Is Theft folks found a little bit more to like than they had initially thought. 80,000 Hours podcast host Rob Wilbin wrote, There's actually a lot of good things in here from my point of view. It's interesting that OpenAI kind of plays down the scale of the concessions negotiated with the Delaware AG in their announcement. Zvi himself actually followed up his initial tweet and said, OpenAI was burying the good news, presumably to try and pretend there was never a problem in the first place, and also if they draw attention to the restrictions, someone might make sure they honor them. But there is at least some good news. For example, as part of the MoU, it says that with regard to safety decisions, the OpenAI board cannot consider shareholder returns, competitive pressure, financial implications, or market timing. Wilbin says, This is likely the single most constraining provision from a commercial standpoint. Most PBC statutes allow directors to balance stakeholder interests. This appears to create a hierarchy where mission trumps profit on safety matters. Michael Page points out that the Safety and Security Committee will also be run by the nonprofit and have the power to require mitigation measures, up to and including halting deployments. Former OpenAI staffer Jacob Hilton, who is one of the signatories to that open letter I mentioned, writes, although this doesn't fully preserve OpenAI's obligation to its nonprofit mission, I'm pleased to see a number of governance measures buried in the details here. Overall, sums up Alex Kaplan, I think this is a pretty good outcome for the world, AI, EAs, the US, the nonprofit, and OpenAI shareholders and employees. No doubt this will be debated for a very long time to come. In the meantime, for some, they think we are about to see OpenAI taken off the leash. Casper Hansen points out that there are no longer Microsoft-led restrictions on OpenAI releasing open weight models, saying you are simply not bullish enough on GPT-OSS. 
And while most of the live stream surrounding the announcement was about the deals, there were a couple hints about how OpenAI sees the future playing out. On AGI timelines, they say it will be a process of years of which we're in, but they also talked a lot about science and research, saying that by September 2026, they believed we'd have automated AI research interns, and by March of 2028, we'd have fully automated AI researchers. And maybe as a last note, they said the internal models give us great hope and there is a very realistic possibility that we will see a huge leap in the quality of the models by September 2026. This is a big conversation, of course. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. But for now, the OpenAI for-profit conversion is complete. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.